All right, we have finished digital painting. So if we look in unit modules, we go to the next thing, and it's called a full concept project, unit 15. As part of that, we have an interim self-assessment, and then a proving ground number four. And then you'll notice the deliverables are the interim self-assessment, the proving ground, and then the assignment conceptual final. And there's a typo there. It should say assignment 8 rather than assignment 10. So what is a conceptual final? It is your last project of the semester. It's also one that is graded by your fellow students out of 10 points, like your midterm portfolio was. And it's based on a concept, on an idea, not on any particular digital technique. So you're allowed to use any technique you like. Like, You get to reflect on what you've learned in the course and then use it towards this project. So the interim self-assessment is to help you reflect on the course. All you have to do is answer those questions. And then proving ground number four is the beginning of your final project. So this is what you need to work on before next class. To go really fast, this is what I'm teaching you. It's called the concept project workflow. You have to define your problem. You have to brainstorm and collect information. You need to create the project and thinking about how you present it and what the end product is going to be. Our end product is going to be a printout or something displayed on a screen. If it's an animation, it can be displayed on the screen. Right? Uh, in the classroom on December 6th at the beginning of class. That's gallery day, according to our course outline. The other thing we need with it to present the product is an artist statement that goes with it, like a label in an art gallery, that says your name, the title of your piece, and just a little something about what you want us to know about your piece. What your idea was, the tools you used to make it, something to help us understand what we're looking at. An example, here's a really quick one that I just, just did. My idea, step zero, is to define your problem. You're going to do that with words in a very simple and direct way, with no more than a sentence. But you, you might take several tries to get one that you're interested in. So mine, for this example, was collective pain and even disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing we can see if that fits under the, the theme for you guys this semester or not. Step one, use your summary sentence to start acknowledging the cliches and brainstorming, eventually generating at least three small thumbnail sketches. So to communicate this idea in a visual solution in three different ways, I did one that was, is they're really focused on connection, this first one, like disconnection. And I have a, a cord with a plug being kind of bent and fraying. And this like being further and further away and kind of this electrical charge coming from it. Another one is to use a human being as kind of a, a metaphor stand in and have their face like being pulled away and disconnected from all these cords. But there's nothing really uplifting about that. There's nothing really uplifting about this. This one had the years 2020 and 2021 with a dirty band-aid over it. They're just quick ways to try to visually get at your idea. They can be cliched, but they're going to lead us to something else. Then what you do with me next class, because between now and, and the beginning of next class on Wednesday, you want to write your idea out as a sentence, and then you want to try to sketch three different solutions. And when you meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, we'll try to focus you down for a refined sketch. So the refined sketch for this, which is often helped by collecting external references and inspirations, that's the collecting info, is that this idea seemed the clearest, but to change it to being a single plug and to show that kind of energy as a positive energy that happens as it's connected, right? But even in being disconnected, you can get perspective and then reconnect. And then, you use that refined sketch and you talk to the instructor again to help develop a plan for what digital art techniques will make this into a finished project. Will it be a digital painting? Will it be a, a photo composite? Will it be a vector illustration? 
Will it be a combination of, of all of these? Will it be an animation? You know, whatever you're most excited about for your portfolio, what you think you can do within the time, and what you want to build your skills in. And then you're going to post your, your artist statement and your finished digital art on the next page. But on this page, you post your sketches and your idea, right? So this is your, your fourth proving ground. This is what you need to get 100 points on. It's worth only 1.5 points, but you need to get all full marks in order to earn your creative problem solving badge, right? So you can pay attention to each of these criteria and it requires you to be here for a critique with me next class. If for any reason you're not able to be here for next class for a critique, then we have to set up a Zoom meeting where I can critique the work in order for you to fulfill that proving ground, right? And that's a lot to do in just our last weeks. So. If we look at the home page and we look at our course outline, this is where we are. It's November 27th now. We're introducing this project so that by next class, we can already finish the proving ground and move on to the final project. So next class on Wednesday, that's when the proving ground is due. It requires individual process critiques with me. So it's best if you come to class with your idea and with your sketches, right? Of course, you might need to tweak them a little bit. We're also thinking about images for our final portfolio to make print ready. That's also the last day questions of the day can be turned in. That includes question of the day four, which is part of the, the painting unit, and the interim self-assessment that's part of this proving ground unit. So just quickly answering those questions. And then our last in-class day for printing this assignment, because once you're done with the proving ground, you get working on the final project, will be December 4th, a week from today. Because that project needs to be printed and ready by December 6th, which is a week from Wednesday, at the beginning of class, with an artist statement. You can also print it outside of class between December 4th and December 6th, using lab hours. Or you can even print it at some other location, right? But ideally, you would have it ready to print by the end of class, December 4th. And then that will be our final project. And then we just have the final exam week after that. So if you go to assignments, you will see the theme for this semester. I choose a different theme for each section each semester. This theme does not mean that that's what your project is about. This theme means that that's what the name of the show is, right? And you are submitting a project to go into that show. So this is a way to get started. So the Barbie movie was big recently, right? And it had a feminist uh, viewpoint on Barbie the Mattel toy. I think it was Mattel, maybe has I don't know. Mattel. So there are a lot of Barbie art shows that were going on during this time, because Barbie's this iconic pop figure, right? But if I want to create something that's good for my portfolio, maybe I want to create a disco ball in the shape of a turkey, like a, a roasted turkey, not a live turkey, and I want it to be smeared with lipstick, how can I fit that within the Barbie show, right? It has everything to do with why I want to do that project and how I can make it work. So that's where the idea goes in. And then I can think, well, when I think of Barbie, I think of ideals of, or I critique the, the ideals of feminine beauty that are culturally mainstream. And I'm going to title my piece um, Warped Reflections. And I'm going to use a disco ball because it has lots of mirrors from different facets and different angles. And I'm going to put it in the shape of a turkey because that's just absurd and it will showcase the absurdity of these ideals of beauty. And then I'm going to mess it up with lipstick because lipstick is a way we can make things look pretty, but it shows that it just obscures the lens and obscures the reflection. I can sell all of that in my artist statement, right? And it can fit perfectly within a Barbie show. It just gets my ideas started. So boredom is a crime is a way for you to get your ideas started, but it's not a way to limit you from doing an idea that you want. And again, you're not doing an idea that you think will appeal to me as the instructor because I don't get a grade in this. 
It's for the audience of the class. Just like if you are a professional making work for a client, you're making it for them, right? Or if you're a professional fine artist and you're making work for an unknown gallery audience, you need to make sure that enough is clear in your idea and in your project and in your artist statement that goes with it that they'll, they'll understand what your intentions are. So if we look at examples, we scroll down here to proving ground number four, just to get right to it under assignments. The first thing you need to do is write a one sentence summary, no more than a sentence. It doesn't even need to be a complete sentence. There's a little article that can help you for, for creative projects that's linked. But basically, you want to put your idea down in one sentence. So my, my disco ball turkey, which is just an absurd idea, right? But the sentence would be, I want to use, a, or I want to critique the ideals of beauty as being a warped reflection of what society cares about. That might be my, my one sentence idea. I didn't say anything about a disco ball, I didn't say anything about a turkey, right? Once you have that sentence, then you come up with your thumbnails and one of those would be like a disco ball in the shape of a turkey with lipstick on it, because that's the idea I'm thinking. But then what's another way I can get to it? Or maybe just a hand mirror and the hand mirror has lipstick on it but the lipstick maybe says something like ugly, right? Make sense? And then my third idea might be, what's another way I could play with these warped reflections of ideals of beauty? I can show a Barbie doll, but the Barbie doll is like a mirror itself, or maybe it's like a, a floor length mirror, full size mirror in the shape of the Barbie silhouette. And those are my three ideas. And then those were the things that were going to refine when you meet with me, right? And we'll find the, the correct approach for you. So this idea, this is a past student example. I'll go through this quickly. Again, doesn't necessarily fit under boredom is a crime. But it can. Right? So what they wanted to do first, they wanted to use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's needs to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. What I like about this is it has a strong point of view. It's not trying to be like everything to all people, but it's also interested in being engaging. So satire is a good way to criticize something, especially something that, that might be what's the word, um, problematic or, or, you know, controversial, thank you. And then they, they use capitals here because obviously they care a lot about it. They think that society politicizes things too much, right? And they want their artwork to kind of showcase that. So the next step, that's their idea, is to come up with visual solutions. And they were also in my, my art history class at the time. So they're combining kind of memes in this case, with an art historical reference. In this case, with like the classic meme generator, I can has cheeseburger. And in this case, with the butterfly memes. And had ideas for what to replace in those memes to talk about issues that were contemporary to when this art was done. And then, this is what you have for a next class. And now you're ready for your first process critique with me. And we look at it. And we, we look at the different information and inspiration that inspires your ideas, like the Karen haircut here, the butterfly meme, an anti-mask protest sign. And then we find a way to clarify your idea. So they chose to use the butterfly meme and have a Karen character kind of replacing it and have a, a floating mask instead of a butterfly and have the tagline, is this oppressing me? And the book they're holding is Google. And then you have your second critique on your refined sketch. And then we're able to set up your personal workflow. And they decided to make this using digital inking and coloring to create an original raster illustration instead of just photo compositing from different things. But this is the original meme, right? And so this is their kind of version on it. And then how will an audience see it? How do you present it? 
Well, you need to create your artist statement to go with it. And so they, they put their name, they put the title, Karen 